In the mornings, I cry behind my eyes and I blame it on the drinking. I can't relax, my bones crack and it's got me thinking if this is it. Forever, right? Whatever that means. If by the end we're just two scenes splitting and you're leaving me, I know it. Slowly. Each day closer to the day you go away, or I do, whichever way round it is, we're tearing apart. But apart from that, we're good. <laughs> apart from the fact that I still think about running away daily. Just to save me the hassle of sewing myself up when we split one stitch in time saves no one, I've come to realise. And I despise every damn piece of advice that my mother gave me that I hated that turned out to be right. I hated the fights that made nights memorable. I hated the stairs for a while. Even though I never fell down them, just frowned when I heard sentences I didn't get yet from the top, sitting down on them, listening, christening the banisters of my tears. These days, I save them. Pretend like I don't give a crap, like I've grown out of that, but now I weep at poetry. I feel I should offer an explanation. I think apologies are needed for my behaviour. I feel like forgiveness is in order, but I just can't give it yet. I'm still caught up in my bad habits, and yeah, I do hold grudges, and I hold them deep in fury, and surely you can see why. Nobody knows that I hold my rage close to my bones. I hold my rage close to my bones, and I can cry by the way that Tom Waits reads the first line of America, and I'm not sure if I'm kind of Ginsburg's words or the weight of the weights, and I'm under the impression that very few boys want to be with a girl who speaks at least two octaves lower than most of the girls she meets, or <laughs> writes for herself, or speaks in beats because that means she thinks. I try so hard to think about what I say and forget to craft the way I'm saying it. When playing it back, I think, shit, do I sound like that? <laughs> so maybe you will cackle and snigger, but believe me, I did first, and my laugh's bigger, but I have a thirst for speaking and for writing, but it's speech that's beating me to the page, so I open my mouth and I say it. Anyway, I often say the wrong thing. The wrong lines come easier, and I don't take the time to construct them properly when I become lazy, and let my tongue roll out like a red carpet for the untalented layabouts, and label it speaking freely. It's easy to sound it out, but meaning it. It's different, isn't it? I shouldn't have to make my voice sound like a girl's just so you like me. So you take the time out of your life to talk back to me. Here's a lesson. You accept the imperfections, not reject them. Embrace their methods of affection and perfect them. Hear the words they're trying to say and connect them. Don't correct them. Try your hardest to collect their faults and triumphs. You'll need them for your collection when you try your best to section out why you love them so much in parts over the rest of them. Learn to love them. Stop testing them, push the hate aside that's pestering and festering and accept them for fuck's sake, see the best in them. <laughs> don't make them ever feel lesser than they are, don't plonk them on a pedestal like in songs you listen to, find a real place for them, hide them in your heart. Because it's the only organ we know to keep things from dying. The brain is trying, but it's not quite there yet. It's just a network of cells that sometimes still forgets, now the heart's the best bet. It will pump until it stops, unlike the brain which deteriorates, tangling knots of facts and imaginings until it's too blurry to focus on reality. People are real. Stop trying to conceal your feelings, we're not mind readers or big believing social healers reading from tea leaves that you spat back into a cup. We can do this. You and me. Beat the organs that define how we need to be to be. Don't let us become blurry. Don't forget me. Don't forget. Don't. Just. Yeah.